I'm now going to talk about what you might do with an actual data set in R. In order to open up your own data set in R, you need to tell R where on your computer that data set is located. And my experience is that that particular task, although not particularly hard, can cause some headaches. So rather than set that as a prerequisite for learning about how to look at data sets in R, we're going to start right now by examining one of the built-in data sets that comes with R. And then once you have a sense of how R deals with data sets, then we'll back up um, and you'll have the opportunity to see how you can open up your own data set in R, which again is not hard, um, but I'd rather begin to show you how to look at data rather than um, tell you how to find the data set on your computer. So we're going to look at a data set called Swiss. And the best way to learn about this data set is to look at its help page. So just like um, functions have help pages, the built-in data sets within R uh, also have help pages. So I'm going to run this code for question mark Swiss. Then you can see this is called the Swiss Fertility and Socioeconomic Indicators Data, and it comes from 1888. It consists of standardized fertility measures and socioeconomic indicators for each of 47 provinces in Switzerland as of, 19, as of 1888. So importantly here, we're learning that the rows in the data set are each provinces as opposed to people. And so here we have the format. It's telling us the different variables in the data set and what they mean. There are some details on where this data set comes from. There's the source, etc. So in order to examine the data set, there's several functions that I can use. I suggest examining the data set in all of the following ways every time you're dealing with a new data set. This is the best way to become familiar with what's in your data, and especially if you're reading in your own data, this is a good way to make sure that it uh, looks as you anticipated. The head function, um, when applied to a data set, will give you the first six rows by default. You can change the arguments to head to look at some other first few number of rows, um, but six is the default fault and that's often enough. So here I can see um, that I have a table. There are six provinces here from Switzerland and I have six different variables. You can see that if I had made this window wider, if I had stretched my window like this instead of like this before printing out um, head Swiss, then Catholic and infant mortality would have, would have been rows appended right here. So the reason that we see these province names twice is just that the data set um, had to go on to the next line in order to fit in the window. So this is helpful. I can see one thing to always check is that the column names um, are above the data rather than um, actually part of the data set. That's good. Um, I can also use the tail function to look at the last few rows, and that's also important, particularly if you're reading in data from Excel, because one problem I've had before is that if I've opened my data set in Excel and then I have clicked my mouse into any particular row underneath the data set and maybe typed something and deleted it, then when I read in my data into R, often R will read in a large number of empty rows at the bottom of the data set, and that's not ideal. So one way to check that is to say tail and then the name of your data set and make sure that you do indeed have data in the last few rows of your data set. If I want to look at the entire data set, I can just type in the name of the data set and press return. Now, I'm going to do that here. Often that is a really dangerous thing to do because if you have a large data set, you really don't want it printing out across your console. And even here, for 47, um, for 47 rows and six columns, you know, this data set does take up some space, but it's not unmanageable. And so I can see the whole scope of the data. One of the first things I do every time I deal with a new data set in R is to say dim, which tells me the dimensions of that data set, how many rows and columns are there. So I have 47 rows and six columns. If I wanted to separately look at the number of columns or look at the number of rows, I can do that. If I'd like to get a vector consisting of the column names, I can do that. And this is particularly helpful if you have a data set that's too big to print out on your screen, particularly if there's too many variables to even use the head or tail function in a useful way. You can just um, use call names to find out the names of all your variables. The summary function in R is very general. So here I'm going to use it to summarize a data set. But in general, what summary tries to do is you give it some information and it tries to um, organize and format that information in the way that it thinks is most helpful to you. So for example, if I give the summary function some output from some regression model that I ran, it will format the regression output in a way that it hopes will be helpful to me. So the summary function is general. Here I'm applying it to a data set. And what it's going to do is it's going to summarize each of the six variables in my data set. If any of these variables had missing information, I would see that here as well. There'd be an NA under these variables and there'd be a count of how many NAs I have. Just like R differentiates between objects that are matrices and objects that are vectors, R also has two different kinds of objects um, that have rows and columns, and those are matrices and data frames. 
Often it doesn't matter. Often you can use either one um, for a particular purpose. However, there are some things that can be done with data frames that can't be done with matrices, and I believe vice versa, although I've more often had the problem that I need something to be a data frame uh, when actually it's a matrix. So the nice thing about data frames is that R realizes that this um, set of numbers or words or whatever they are that you have arranged in rows and columns does indeed consist of data. And so R accepts that in a data frame, some of the columns will have words in them and some of the columns will have numbers in them, for example. Um, R knows that if, if you summarize a data set, what you're probably interested in is knowing uh, what's going on down each particular column because each column represents a variable. Whereas if you um, try to do that with a matrix, it may not work the same way. So just like you can with uh, vectors and matrices, you can use the is and as functions um, to find out what you have. So if I say is dot matrix Swiss, that's false because the Swiss data set is not a matrix, it's rather a data frame. If I run that, it'll be true. Um, if you use an existing data set within R, it's already a data frame. And if you, if you open a data set in R in one of the standard ways, again, it'll already be a data frame. So often you don't have to worry about this. But if you do get an error that says, you know, uh, we wish this matrix was a data frame, frame, um, we can't run this function, we being R, R can't run this function, you can do as.data.frame Swiss, and now I've replaced Swiss um, with, with something that is a data frame. In this case, it already was a data frame, but if you have a matrix and you want to make it a data frame, you can use code like this. There are several ways to access the columns within your data set. One way to do it is to think of your data set as a matrix, and the usual way to subset a matrix will be successful um, for a data frame. So if I want the first column from Swiss, I can type Swiss, open the brackets to say where. I want all the rows, comma, which column do I want? Well, perhaps I just want column one. If I do that and press return, I get back all the fertility values because fertility is the first column in this data set. So that works, that works great, that works fine. If I don't know which number column I'm talking about. In other words, I know the name of my variable, but I don't know where it lies within the data set. That's fine because I can use these brackets in the same way. I can say I want the Swiss data set, all the rows. Which column do I want? Well, I can tell it I want the column that's called fertility. And that's exactly the same thing. So I have a choice when using this bracket method to access vectors, to access columns within my data set. Um, I can either tell it the column number or I can tell it the name of the column. I have one more choice here, and this is the one that I use most frequently. If I have a data frame rather than a matrix, I can use this dollar sign symbol to access a particular vector. So I can say Swiss dollar sign fertility, and that gives me the same output. This dollar sign has a um, similar purpose for lots of different types of objects in R. Basically, if an object like a data frame has lots of components, lots of parts that I might want to access, I can use the dollar sign to access the different parts of it. So when Swiss is a data frame, the different parts are all the different variables, and I can access the different variables by naming them after that dollar sign. If I want to access more than one column of a data set, uh, this won't work, this notation here, Swiss dollar sign fertility. So instead, I could do something like Swiss give me columns one and two. That would work. There I have the first two columns. And if I wanted to get the first two columns in a different way, scrolling up, I can see the names of the first two columns of fertility and agriculture. I could do this. I could say Swiss open the bracket, all the rows, comma, which columns. And then I could make a, a vector of the words fertility and agriculture. And if I do that, that will give me that same output, those two particular columns from the data set. When I'm trying to access just one column, though, I use this notation. I use the Swiss dollar sign fertility. Um, the way I usually deal with the fact that I need to write the name of the data set dollar sign before the variable name is that I give my data sets very short names. Like I usually name my data sets the letter D, and then it's very quick to write D dollar sign before the name of my variable. However, some people get really frustrated uh, writing the name of their uh, the name of their data set every time they want to access a variable. And so there is a command in R called attach. If you say attach in the name of a data set, then all the variables in that data set become available as vectors, and you don't have to say Swiss dollar sign. You can just refer directly to fertility. So here, if I do that, if I run attach, now if I just ask for the fertility column without saying anything about the word Swiss, I indeed get out those 47 values for the fertility. Um, I don't like doing this um, personally. Feel free to use it. Many people like it. The reason I don't like it is that if you, are to, if you were to make any changes to your data set, it's not clear which part you would change, uh, the Swiss part or 
uh, the Swiss dollar sign fertility or fertility itself. And depending on which choice you make, the original data set may or may not change. And rather than keep track of that, I would rather just um, leave my variable in the original data set. Even more important, R, unlike other softwares, uh, does not require you to have only one data set open at a time or refer to a particular primary data set at any particular moment. I can have lots of data sets moving around. So if I have a couple data sets um, and I've attached the columns from those, now it's not even clear which columns belong to which data sets. And if I have two columns with the same name from two different data sets, um, that's going to cause confusion. So my strong preference is to give my data sets very short names and then refer to um, refer to the variables in those data sets by typing the name of the data set, dollar sign, name of the variable every time.